So I guess today being a nice day like it is, 50 something degrees, we might as well um, continue on Big Black. So let's just check it out. So you can see in there, I think you can see, rotor is kind of looking kind of nasty. So let's just pull this thing apart and see what we can see. Now we only need to jack up the wheel just a couple inches just to get it uh, so we can get the tire off. Now that we got the jack stand in place, we're just going to zip off the lug nuts. millimeter wrench used to take off your caliper bracket or slide bolts got two of them on the back side and don't let the red um, confuse you this is just a um, power stop caliper it's a, it's literally it's the same exact thing kind of give it got to give it a, a pry all right and that's what these slots are for. Take a pry bar and you can catch the edge of the rotor. And then, with the camera being in the way, you can kind of pry the caliper a little bit just to kind of open it up as long as it's not frozen like this one is. And then, use that same pry bar and pry off the calipers and let's see what's going on here. Just grab a caliper bracket. Kind of just hook it in anywhere that you can. So we can see the pad on this side. It's actually pretty mint. Let's see what this pad looks like. So I'm just gonna kind of clean it off here. I'm just gonna get this out of the way for now. I'm gonna hang it a different way. That way it's out of the way from what I've gotta do. You just don't wanna have stress on this hose. So let's just hang this in a different way. Keep the stress off the hose while it's still kind of, you know, in that upright position. That way we can get to these bolts back here, which those bolts are a 21 millimeter. So we're gonna wanna take that off. I'm gonna use an impact just cause it's easier. And then if you don't have a swivel, I'm using actually a uh, swivel socket, a uh, swivel gear wrench, just to... And I'll be able to take off this bracket. I left a couple of threads on the top one, just so it didn't drop down on my face. So we're gonna take the rotor off, leave the caliper hanging for now, and then we'll pull these bolts right here. They're just the uh, 18 mil. See that right there? We pull those out and then take a pry bar and kind of pry out this and just slide that axle right out. So we, we beat on it a couple of times, it's not gonna work, so I'm gonna use the bolt method. So what you do is you take a bolt, slide it through, a little washer and a nut on the end of it and then put some type of a backing plate up against the rotor if you're concerned with uh, salvaging the rotor. I'm actually going to do it that way even though we don't have to but um, yeah that's just a way to get uh, stubborn rotors off of these trucks. I wish I had a bolt that was <laughs> not as long as this. Oh, whatever. I just, just do it like that. Kind of want 
want you to be able to see how this works here. So you'll be able to see the face of this here moving out. Maybe, you know, you can judge it. See how much easier this is. Just using that bolt method. Pretty sure it's probably free now. Here we go. Call that crunchy. But now you get a better look at how that bolt was right there. Auto focus. a quick little easy setup. It's just a fast way. You know, wailing on it with a hammer sometimes works, but not always. So this is definitely just an easier way. Really doesn't take much force. You can apply like a little bit of this. Works, right? I'm gonna throw just a little bit of spray back of these bolts here. Just so they can kind of marinate a little bit. So when you're doing this, the only thing that's really kind of holding this in is like a little rubber O-ring. So when you're doing this, just very carefully pry on, you can pry on one of your lugs, just be really careful. It doesn't take much pressure at all, I mean you saw that, like literally it was just like using these fingers just to kind of pry that off and you get that nice smell. So I'm going to grab a, um, put that in for now, I'm going to grab a bucket just to put it underneath just in case there's fluid leaking out. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit just so you can see maybe a little better or something. Keep in mind when you do pull this axle out, um, you want to make sure that you've got a place to put it. So like I said, it's just a very easy pry. Just lowering it. And just kind of like prepare yourself because you don't want to kill the axle as you're pulling it out. Yeah, see there was just a little bit. So you want to kind of support the axle as it's going. That's it. Boom. Yeah, because the wind's blowing everywhere, I am just going to kind of shove this in there for now. And you can see the fluid leaking out. That's why it's a good idea to have a pan. So we did put a pan underneath just in case. And obviously for me, with this... Uh, damn wind doesn't really help so I'll just kind of just shove it like that for now so the only thing you're going to need to take that uh, spindle nut off is this right here this is uh, from gear wrench 3195d it's a four pin spline removal tool or a spline nut removal tool and uh, you can see how it's designed it fits into this portion of the shaft and then the four pins align up with the four pins that are right inside there. And then, uh, yeah. Let's just get that off. Nice, the sun's out. And on this, normally it's righty tighty lefty loosey, but we're on the driver's side. And tightening this is actually going counterclockwise versus loosening, we're going counterclockwise. You're going to hear some clicking too. Paper towels here just to catch the fluid from spraying everywhere because of the wind.
can see it's keyed. So there's a little key that slides into the key that's right there. So now what you want to do is you want to grab a pick so you can pick your bearing out. So I'm just using a cheap little Harbor Freight pick. You don't need anything nuts. It's just, you know, it's just grabbing the bearing. So we'll take a look at this bearing. Let's see how this looks. I wasn't feeling any issues anyway, but it's always good to check that out, you know? Everything looks nice and nice and smooth. So just to keep things clean, I'm just going to wrap things up in paper towel. The way it just keeps it nice, you know? So now we need to do is just pry this hub off. A couple of different ways you can do that. I'm just going to use a pry bar against that. It's just kind of like applying, you know, I guess, even, even pulls. You'll see it's coming off. Just kind of hold it, you know what I mean? It does weigh a couple pounds. It's not bad. Part of the seal came off with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. I'm just gonna shove a paper towel in there for now. First I'm gonna kinda like clean it out just a bit like that. Take another paper towel. Just shove it in the hole, just like that. The way nothing's gonna go in there. Big Black's got, you know, all kinds of rust and stuff with the wind blowing. Don't want anything to kind of like hook its way in there, you know what I'm saying? Pans down there. <laughs> I forget you can't see. So there you go. There's the hub off. Gonna be, re uh, gonna be removing the seal that's on here. Obviously, you know, we got pieces of seal left all over the place. So, but yeah, that's it. I mean, the stuff's easy, man, you know? Just get it done. Spray on it. I'm gonna try using my uh, pick tool. So I can get that off. It should work. Let's get this out of Just gotta kinda work it around, you know? That's what this tool is kinda designed for. Just kinda get it in there, work around, pry that. But uh, that's what the back of the seal looks like. Pretty crunchy. So now here's what we're looking like now. Man, why does it seem like it's so focused in? So what we're going to do now is we're going to be going after these back bolts here. So we already doused these down. So you got one, two, and on the other side, <laughs> three, four. The lighting is horrible. But those are all... Those are all doused down now, and uh, you can see we got some crunchy stuff inside there that'll be all cleaned up. We'll clean all this up, we'll paint it up nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I was saying, we're going to get this emergency brake out of here. I just want it out of the way because obviously once we take this piece off, it, the emergency brake is still going to be attached and there's no sense in having that. So I'm just going to pull back this spring right here. Come on. Pull back this spring that's right here. And then you'll be able to access the clips with like a screwdriver or whatever. Or, and then you'll be able to um, wiggle that uh, right out of the way. Anyways. What I do is I take this 
Not too many people are actually going to have this right here. Focus. It's a. It's called Park Tool. It's a BT3, and uh, this is a company made in USA, but this is actually for bikes. And what you do is you pull back the spring, take the little tool and slide it in between, just like that, and just keeps the spring back. And that way you can then take a screwdriver and push down on these little clips. Boy, it's funny. When you put one thing in the way, literally the light is in the way. That is awesome. We got one more. It's right here. Come on. And you can just slide it out. That's what I'm saying. I could just take that piece and just pull it right out of there just like that and now it's disconnected from there and then what you need to do is then disconnect it from this spot right here and all you do is you just take it rotate it to the up position like this and then kind of weasel it off oh that damn camera <laughs> uh, just like that. <laughs> oh, the camera's always in the way. And then you can just take this and just push it through. And you can see it comes through the other side. Right there. Just like this. And then, uh, yeah, this is kind of frozen up, but I kind of expected that. We'll, uh, we'll fix this up. Maybe we'll buy a new piece. I don't know. We'll see. I keep trying to I keep trying to figure out ways to like illuminate so bam hopefully that works you know what's funny is I bet the uh, that the camera's gonna be away but anyways now we're going after these bolts right here and these bolts right here these are a 15 16 and these do take some force so I'm gonna use my breaker bar half inch breaker this helps if you have a nice long breaker bar Does help if the caliper's not in the way, like it is right now. That's whatever it is. Probably easier just to get my impact in here. That's it. Let's loosen them up. Those bolts are out. Just um, take a hammer and just give it a couple of light little taps. Um, obviously, you're not going to tap on this flange that's right here because that's what's connected to the axle. But it shouldn't take much to yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't take much to bang that off. But there you go. You can see what's left of the backing plate. So here's the backing plate stuff. And uh, there's the backing plate right there. Thank you, New England weather. Anyways, um, 
Now we got to do is we got to drive out. We got to drive out these four pins right here. One, two, three, four. And I just do that from the back side and just whack them through. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to take the um, <laughs> what's left of the backing plate out. And you got to pop these four bolts right here. So these are technically one, two, three, four bolts. And what I do is you can just take a socket. And I'm using a block just because it's just, you know, easier. And what you can do is you just take the bolt, make sure it fits obviously over that, you know, section right there. And then just take a hammer and whale on that. And then it'll pop the bolt down and in. I'll show you what I mean. So just make sure you position it over and just give it a whack. See it? Oops. You may think that's a washer, but <laughs> it's not. And you can see how the um, the bolt is actually splined. So, and it doesn't matter, you know, it's not like these go in any specific spot. So, set that up. Hang that over. Oops. Take these off. Make it a little bit easier for me here. And just give it a whack. Boom. That one. This the next one here. Done. Yeah. Whack. Done. Good old Harbor Freight sockets. So now we gotta work on just separating that other piece of the seal that's still kind of stuck in the hub, and that way we can clean that bearing. Then we'll be able to clean up this, you know, hub and make it look nice again. My trusty cardboard. gonna work in on this seal right here where it basically is up against the um, flange of the hub that's why I like this tool because this tool should do exactly what I need it to do and that's separate this um, section of seal out of here I can keep it tipped Kind of just work your way around. <laughs> See, it's coming out. Now, at some point, you can put it at an angle. Really, kind of persuade it to do what you want. There we go. That's it. Pull it out. Be careful of this. You'll see that this guy has tabs that are facing inward towards that bearing. Just make sure you keep that orientation. You know, just, just remember, all right? So now we're gonna take these two items and we're gonna throw these in the juice. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour some, pour some of my um, cleaner. You, you'll see. I'm using a paint strainer. Just to strain whatever garbage might be in this. That's good enough. I think I've actually strained this out a couple of times. But this is what I'm going to put my bearings in. So I'm going to do is I'm just going to use one of my picks. And just slowly drop the, um, the nut, the splined nut and the bearing into the juice. And the same thing with the spline nut. Put the cover on and just give it a swirl.
just gonna clean these off real quick. Use an air compressor and blow everything out after I get my safety glasses on. But for now, we'll just wrap these up, paper towel, keep them nice and safe. Well, like I said, just keep that orientation because that's how that goes in, right? When you put everything back together. And just remember which bearing goes with which. So we're going to keep these two obviously together because we know that that goes on that back side of the hub. That's probably good. You can use a paper towel or a rag. I just use paper towels. Cheap. Fish out that bearing, whatever it might be. Right there. Nice. Fish out our little piece. And like I said, just because we're doing that um, orientation uh, portion, I'm going to get another paper towel. It's going to kind of clean it off a little bit. Now you want to kind of like check the bearings. So, you want to make sure that there's no obvious destruction of these little rollers. Everything actually looks mint. There was no noise with associated with this rear end anyway, so I wasn't really expecting there to be any issues, but you know, you never know. Remember that orientation, those tabs inward. And then we'll just kind of fold this up, keep it nice and safe, and move on. Now you can go ahead and clean this up. So you can see we've got some of that backing plate still left on here. And then I take my scraper, this scraper, I love these kind of scrapers. And you can go ahead and kind of like, you know, <laughs> pry into it. Um, you're going to want to take out this boot here. So, should be able to just kind of like grab it out. So yeah, you can just kind of like just tear it out. It's like a chef boot. <laughs> and then hold it up and should be able to take like a punch and kind of pry out these little sections right here. See like that? How it's like set into the groove. And then uh, you can go ahead and clean all this stuff up. A lot of residual material left here. So, and Obviously we can give that a wash down, but it's not really necessary. We're all cleaned up, all painted. In this box here, we've got a box of pots. So we've got our Timken seals. We've got all of our brand new spring brake hardware for the parking brake and then obviously the uh, shift boots nah, it's, it's just the um, it's just the um, seals so you like have the the boot for the parking brake um, assembly that kind of go, goes through it's like a rod but it's not and then you've got the little uh, slotted piece for adjusting the brakes and obviously we need our socket that we're using we're using the uh inch and a quarter because it leaves plenty of room for that uh you know bolt to you know have room and it's just these bad boys right here so these are going to have to go through this side right here i mean you can't get it wrong if you forgot check your footage <laughs> or check my footage but you can see inside uh when we did paint this you can still see those spline sections where it marred up the metal um, originally going in from the factory. I was trying to like figure this out, right? This, now, this is the part that's kind of messed up. So, I'm on this side so that you can see it this way and the lights this way, but I think maybe you should be seeing it this way because this is the piece that's up top 
on the hub. So I think this is the way that I'll do it like this. I don't know if that makes any sense. So anyways, um, back to what I was doing. So I need to uh, install one of these old style Hurst shifter boots. And it's pretty easy which way, uh, knowing how this goes on. I mean, it's pretty apparent. So um, it goes this way. <laughs> and you just line up the holes. Just like, you know, here, here, here. But what you want to do is you want to take this little boot and the boot actually goes in this way. Hopefully it's in shot. And it has like, um, there's like a groove right there that you have to get this piece of metal kind of like into. I mean, this piece of rubber into that groove of the metal. You'll see. Good enough. You know, so this section right here is obviously going over this piece. I have no idea what the wind's like. And then I'm going to take my Hob Afraid socket, place it underneath this side right here so that I can see right, you know, down and in. Take one of my pins, kind of set it in place, make sure we're all lined up here. Take a hammer and just whale it into position. Make sure you're lined up. That's it. See that? Then just move on to the next one. Just to make sure that I know that I got it settled in on each piece. You could use a press too, if you have one. I have one in the, sh in the shop, but you don't need it. Anyways, there you go. That's what that looks like. Touch these with some paint. A little extra paint. Never hurt nothing, right? I'm just going to hit these threads with a quick little blast of um, brake clean. I'm gonna leave this uh, little piece of tissue paper in there for now, the piece of paper towel, just so that um, we don't get anything in there. It, the wind is blowing, so now we can go ahead and set our backing plate combination back into its spot. Held on by those four bolts from the back side. And what I'm gonna end up doing is, I after I'm all done with these, I am going to come through on the back side here and um, paint up the back side of these bolts, which will also kind of uh, seal up the threads a little bit too, which will just keep them nice, you know. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to assemble the um, parking brake on here and this is the actual piece that's for, it actually slides into that rubber shift boot, you know, that her shift boot that we were talking about and that slides into that little slot right there. So this piece going this way is sliding into that slot. But what we're going to do first is we're actually going to coat this with that uh, nice brake caliper grease that I've got. Now I kind of moved you down. Uh, to a better spot and then here are or here is the part number for the brake hardware springs and pieces I'm just gonna th throw some lube on this right here the way it just kind of like you know slides in and then um, before I do that before I you know put everything together I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like smear some stuff in there that way it kind of you know, goes where it's supposed to go. Be able to take off any excess. But um, you gotta think too is that there's actually um, sliding spots. 
So there's little, you know, like locations where this actually slides back and forth on the actual uh, brake pieces. And if you look, let's just get this in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide it into that slot right there, making sure that that, that hook side right there is actually facing that way because the emergency brake or that parking brake is coming along this side you want to make sure that when you loop it in that it's being pulled this way see what I'm saying so now we're in there try to keep your hands as clean as you can when you're doing brakes now on these um, backing plates there are six little touch points I call them they're raised little flat points so you got one two three and then on the opposite side one, two, probably can't see that one, three down there. And what it is is that it makes it so the back side of the brake shoe actually rides on that little, it's kind of like a, like, I don't know, just an area for it to ride on, you know? So you can take some of this stuff and kind of smear it on those little three, three spots or six spots. So on this, there is no left or right. There is an up and down though. So you can see you got your larger slot right here. That's actually for your adjuster, and then that small one right there, it actually goes into that actual portion of the uh, parking brake. And then you'll see that this piece right here, that kind of stays like that. You'll see. And then um, you can take some of that brake stuff, just put a little bit on there, just like that. See? You'd be good. And then I'm going to touch those areas there is another stuff that I could use but this is what I'm using right now there's a uh, never cease stuff that you can use and this side goes like this right into that little channel just like that I'm gonna put a little dab on the back side of the pin here because that's what's coming through the back side of the um, brake right here so I'm coming through that little hole so now, now you can see we got the pin in there I'll be able to show you on this side probably a little bit easier now we're gonna take the yellow spring this is the top spring kind of feed that in there just like that and then what we'll do is we'll take the other brake lube up that little spot right there where it's gonna contact and then I'll put a well not so much of a dab a bit of a dab right there and then what you do is take the spring feed the spring kind of the camera stopped anyways let's try this again you get your spring in there Put your spring in on the other side. And then just basically roll it into place. Hopefully that spring kind of stays where it should. Just like that. Now I'll just prep the adjuster. I'm gonna smear a good amount on the adjuster itself part that actually goes inside the tube like this right here just like that and like I said you can clean off the excess boom like that we'll pet that right on those threads right there and we'll screw this all the way in put a little bit right on that little section there put a little bit on that section there just like that, just like that. Screw that adjuster in. And the adjuster, the, uh, the little wheel, goes towards the back. And I'll put the spring in first, like that. Just to make it a heck of a lot easier. Then we'll take the adjuster and put the adjuster in. Just like that. Now just kind of keep this together, put our little pin in through the back here, come on, go 
to your home. Just like that. Just make sure it's set down and then you're good to go. Let's wipe off any excess stuff here. We got nothing on the pads, so we're good. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to take a little bit of schmutz, put it there, and put it there, just so we're good. Get in there, we're good. Put it right in there. Good to go. And like I said, just wipe off any extra. All set. Just kind of jam it in there. Jam it in there. Good to go. Work on the back side first, obviously, because that's the way it goes on. So we've got our hub all cleaned up and painted. Got a new Timken seal. And then we gotta grab our bearings. So this bearing right here, this one is already packed. Um, not with this, it doesn't work uh, this way. This was just a way for me to keep it nice and close. Just kind of fish that out of there. So this bearing obviously slides in this way, and um, you just drop it in. I mean, there's like no like wrong way to do it. And then we'll take this piece. Remember, you got to put those tabs facing inward, like that. So I'll get this out of here. This um, style of seal is a little bit more forgiving on installation, both on the inside and outside. You can see how it's designed. It's got those ridges right there, and this is uh, some type of a rubberized material. And then um, I'm still going to use a, uh, I'm still going to use you know like a block of wood to throw this on, but. These, like I was saying, these kind of, these seals are just more forgiving. So, you take it, you still center it, like, the best you can when you do it. And I'm just going to take, like, a nice block of wood that I got right here. And get a hammer and just pound it in. That's it. Now we can go ahead and install it in the truck. Not that it matters, I did actually throw some of my, just an extra little dab of that um, nice ceramic grease that I got, or whatever it is for the, um, this stuff right here. The uh, ceramic, where is the camera? Right there. <laughs> come on, focus, come on. I don't know, can you see that? This stuff right there. Alright, for some reason it switched over to the... That ain't gonna work. That was fun. Trying to touch the camera, turn it on. So, there's a, um... Come on. Focus. Come on. Focus. Oh, auto focus. Come on. There we go. Alright, so here's a... Here's a properly greased bearing right here. Um, just put a wad of grease in your hand and... You basically just run it in through the open channel... And then eventually it makes its way all the way to the other end. And uh, you do have to grease these bearings because if you don't... Actually, I'm going to show you something. But um, grease your bearings no matter what. But uh, we're actually going to add oil to the hub before we put the, um, 
the axle back in. I'll just show you. Got the hub. It's not a bad thing to handle this thing if you've got um, greasy hands right now. And I mean, this is you know very simple, basic. It's just putting it on the way you took it off. Just be careful bringing that over that you don't want to, you know, slam into that seal. And then you can just with that seal just push it on, just like like that. You know what? We can leave that in there for now. But what you'll do is you'll actually take. See, I can just, you know, I'm gonna just go leave it on. You're gonna take, um, you're gonna take some axle grease, and you, you know, the actual, um, not grease. How do I explain it? Your axle lube that you actually put in your rear end, and you're actually gonna fill that cavity that's in there. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? So what I got is I got the um, Lucas oil with a uh, fluid transfer pump and I'll just stick it inside there we go you don't need a ton but you just want to put it in there and you can see it starts to kind of weep out and that's it stick that back in come on stay in there Let's take your bearing, stick that in, take this piece, stick this piece in there and it's keyed, alright, so it can only go in one way, alright, so you'll see, just like that, and then you gotta get your little tool. As the fluid starts to come out, but you can go ahead and just kind of smear it around. Take the paper out of there. Get your little key in. Now remember, this is a reverse thread, so tightening it, you're going counterclockwise. And for um, new bearings, it's um, 60 foot, uh, 60 foot pounds to tighten it in. So we'll set our torque wrench to 60. So for new bearings, it's um, tighten it to 60 foot pounds while you're rotating the um, the actual hub. So anyway, is uh, one of the things that you just want to keep in mind when you're doing that uh, preload. So 60 foot-pounds, five clicks for new bearings, seven clicks for uh, used or whatever old bearings. So, yeah. So torque wrench to 60 foot-pounds. And um, once it gets to that 60 foot-pound mark, you'll hear it. So we want to spin this while we're tightening. It's going to be a little bit until we actually get to the 60. But you just want to keep spinning this. Oh. So we're already there. So 60 foot-pounds, and that was while you were spinning that. Okay. Let's double check. Or the on 60. Right there, 60 foot-pounds. Now that we got that torque to 60, we are now going to back this off seven clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the axle. So now the next thing they would tell you, pop out your O-ring on your axle, because that's the seal. And you want to clean out all in behind in that channel right there. We already cleaned off the seal. We also put a little bit of uh, axle lube on there. What you doing, Haley? <laughs> it's a bone. And then uh, we're just going to stab the axle back in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of um, of that uh, axle grease or the oil, and I'm actually going to lubricate this seal right here. And I can just 
very carefully. It's called stabbing the axle in. You just want to very carefully slide the axle into place, supporting as much of the weight as you can of this axle. Where you don't push any garbage in there. And then that's it. I'm gonna give it a shove in. Oops. First line. Yeah. Up. We're good right there. Then we can go ahead and just reinstall our axle bolts. They still got thread lock on them. Good enough. <laughs> I'm just going to run them in on the auto mode. Okay. Make sure it's not cross threading. No, it's fine. All right, so now we're gonna uh, add a piece of power stop to the mix. So inside this box right here. Good enough. Bounce test. 